after the conquest of Mecca, there was an, a man by the name of Fudala al-Layfi. And Fudala al-Layfi actually came to Mecca to assassinate the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Why? Because of the culture wars at that time that are very similar to the culture wars of today. That this man is coming to change your way of life. He's coming to take away your freedom. He's coming to, to turn you against your parents. He's coming to do this. He's coming to do that. That's what they use. The same tactics. The same top tactics. Except you had people that were, you know, that, that, were, that were going out of their way, even around Mecca, outside of Mecca, to propagate this hatred and this hate-mongering towards the Muslims. So Fudala came to assassinate the Prophet And he had a dagger hiding under his garment. And he started doing tawaf. He started walking around the Kaaba while the Prophet ﷺ was walking around the Kaaba. And again, after the conquest of Mecca, and the Prophet ﷺ sees him and he's mumbling under his breath. So the Prophet ﷺ, he goes up to him and he says, Ya Fudala, bima tuhaddithu nafsak? He smiles at him and he says, what are you mumbling? What are you talking to yourself about? He said, I'm just remembering Allah. I'm just praying, remembering Allah. The Prophet ﷺ said, okay. He kept walking. Second round. Fudala starts coming close to the Prophet ﷺ. He's mumbling. He's kind of breathing a little bit hard because he knows what he's about to do. As soon as he kills the Prophet ﷺ, he's going to be killed. He's on a suicide mission. I mean, it really is a suicide mission. As soon as he kills him, he's dead. So he's getting nervous. He's mumbling. The Prophet ﷺ turns around. He says, Ya Fudala, bima tuhaddithu nafsak. He smiles at him again. And he says, Oh Fudala, what are you talking to yourself about? And he said, Ya Rasulullah. He kind of got a little annoyed that he asked him that question again. He said, I'm just remembering Allah and doing tawaf. So a third time came. And the Prophet ﷺ turned around to him again and he turned to him with his entire body. And he said, Ya Fudala, bima tuhaddithu nafsak? He said, Oh Fudala, what are you talking to yourself about? And so he raised his voice at the Prophet ﷺ. He said, Oh Messenger of Allah, atuf wa Allah. I'm making tawaf, I'm remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the Prophet ﷺ walked up to Fudala and he put his hand on his chest. And the Prophet ﷺ started to rub his hands on his chest and he started to pray for him. And Fudala, he says in these words, Fudala says that there was no face on the face of the earth, no name out of all of the names of the, of the people of the earth, and no mention that was more hated to me than that of Muhammad ﷺ. But as soon as he put his hand on my chest and prayed for me, he said he became the most beloved face, the most beloved name, and the most beloved mention in the entire world to me. And he became Muslim. Now here's the thing. The Prophet ﷺ knew that he was there to assassinate him. He could have made an example out of him too, right? Just like his enemies did. They tried to take some of those early Muslims and they tried to torture them in public so that they could deter anyone else from considering this message. The Prophet ﷺ took the moral high ground, which we need to do as a community. And the Prophet ﷺ, instead of killing him and making an example out of him, and it would have been justified, the Prophet ﷺ taught him what this message was all about. He won his heart. The Prophet ﷺ didn't need to sit there and have a debate with him at that point. He didn't have to talk to him over here because the message already made sense, but the hatred in the heart was preventing him from even considering the message. And so if you free the hearts, the minds will be freed as well. And that's what the Prophet ﷺ taught us in many, many different ways. And so forget about all of these people that have spoken ill of the Prophet ﷺ today and these people that think that Islam is a message of hate and that th you know say these terrible things about the Prophet ﷺ. Read what Gandhi wrote. Read what Sir George Bernard Shaw wrote. Read what Orwell wrote about the Prophet ﷺ. The historians of history have looked at the character of the Prophet ﷺ and fallen in love with him. Fallen in love particularly with the way that he treated others. And the way that he always took the moral high ground and the way that the Prophet ﷺ killed his enemies with love. He killed them with love. If a person hates you, and if a person has had their heart filled with hatred towards you, what's going to change them is not walking up to them and handing them a copy of the Qur'an. What might change them is that while you're handing them a copy of the Qur'an, you have a huge smile on your face. And you say, good morning, sir. 
Good morning, ma'am. I just wanted to share this with you. And what would be even greater than that is if you were to share with them the message of Islam without even giving them any material. As Umar ibn al-Khattab used to say, Kunu du'atin illa wa antum samitun. Be callers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even as you are quiet. They said, how can we be callers to Allah without saying anything? He said, bi husn al-khuluq. With good character, you can call people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And know our message is not to convert anyone. La ikraha fi deen. There is no compulsion in religion. We're not here to convert anyone. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us to be patient with people. Be patient with people. Because sometimes they don't know any better. And it's not that they don't know any better up here. This is an intellectual faith. We pride ourselves on pride ourselves on being on having an intellectual faith. A message that makes sense. A message that's very simple. One God that we worship and one God that sends prophets and messengers to call to the worship of that one God. It makes sense. That's why Islam is still the fastest growing religion in America. With all the hate propaganda, it's still the fastest growing religion in America. It's still the fastest growing religion in the world. 